Your testimony regarding the Somo commercial invoice, uh, B13201, that shows Iridium Petroleum lifted 1,014,403 barrels of Iraqi oil pursuant to Somo crude oil sales contract M923. Exhibit 45, her testimony regarding a SOMO chart entitled Crude Oil Allocations During Phase 9 of the Memorandum of Understanding that indicates contract M923 was executed between SOMO and Mr. Fawez Zorakat slash George Galloway slash Iridium Petroleum. Exhibit 9, we also heard testimony regarding a memo from the Executive Director of SOMO to the Oil Minister requesting approval of contract M923. The document includes an official Ministry of Oil stamp dated 115-201 and provides details of the contract M923 signed with Iridium Petroleum Company Perens for Wa Zurichet Dash Miriam's Appeal, indicating that the allocation recipient for contract M923 was for Wa Zurichet Miriam's Appeal. Uh, Mr. Galloway, as I indicated in my opening statement, this is not a court of law. This committee has simply made available information obtained during the investigation from interviews of former Iraqi officials, as well as Iraqi documents that lay out how the oil for food program worked how allocations were given to favored friends, how allocation holders made substantial commissions selling those allocations to oil companies, what Ramadan called compensation for support, what another official, when talking about another allocation holder, said, of course they made a profit, that's the whole point, how surcharges on oil contracts were given back to the Saddam regime and were the responsibility of the allocation holder. The evidence clearly identifies you as an allocation beneficiary who transferred the allocations to Fawaz Zurichat, who became chairman of your organization, Miriam's Appeal. Appeal. Senior Iraqi officials have confirmed that you, in fact, received oil allocations and that the documents that identify you as an allocation recipient are valid. If you can help provide any evidence that challenges the veracity of these documents or the statements of former Iraqi officials, we'd welcome that input. Mr. Galloway, you're appearing before the subcommittee without asserting any privilege or immunity. Indeed, your appearance before the subcommittee is entirely voluntary and on your own accord. No subpoena was issued to secure your appearance. You're appearing before the subcommittee concerning matters that do not arise out of the performance of any of your official duties as a member of the British Parliament, but instead concern actions taken by you in your capacity as a private citizen. Before we begin, pursuant to Rule 6, all witnesses who testify before the subcommittee are required to be sworn. This time, I would ask you to rise and please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give before the subcommittee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. We will be using a timing system today, uh, Mr. Galloway. Uh, we could have 10 minutes for opening statement. If you need more time, we'll certainly accommodate that. And uh, you may proceed. Senator, I am not now, nor have I ever been, an oil trader. And neither has anyone on my behalf. I have never seen a bottle of oil, owned one, bought one, sold one, and neither has anybody on my behalf. Now, I know that standards have slipped over the last few years in Washington, but for a lawyer, you're remarkably cavalier with any idea of justice. I'm here today, but last week, you already found me guilty. You traduced my name around the world without ever having asked me a single question without ever having contacted me, without ever having written to me or telephoned me, without any contact with me whatsoever. And you call that justice. Now, I want to deal with the pages that relate to me in this dossier. And I want to point out areas where there are, let's be charitable and say, errors. And then I want to put this in the context that I believe it ought to be. On the very first page of your document about me, you assert that I have had many meetings with Saddam Hussein. This is false. I have had two meetings with Saddam Hussein, once in 1994, and once in August of 2002. By no stretch of the English language can that be described as many meetings with Saddam Hussein. As a matter of fact, I've met Saddam Hussein exactly the same number of times as Donald Rumsfeld met him. The difference is 
Donald Rumsfeld met him to sell him guns and to give him maps, the better to target those guns. I met him to try and bring about an end to sanctions, suffering and war. And on the second of the two occasions, I met him to try and persuade him to allow Dr. Hans Blix and the United Nations weapons inspectors back into the country. A rather better use of two meetings with Saddam Hussein than your own Secretary of State for Defense made of his. In the same opening paragraph, you assert that I was an outspoken supporter of the Hussein regime. This is false. I have brought along here a dossier, a dossier for all the members of your committee of statements by me as late as early rather as the 15th of March 1990 in which I condemn the Saddam Hussein dictatorship in the most withering terms. A stance I have taken since around about the time you were an anti-Vietnam war demonstrator. I was an opponent of Saddam Hussein when British and American governments and businessmen were selling him guns and gas. I used to demonstrate outside the Iraqi embassy when British and American officials were going in and out doing commerce. You will see from the official parliamentary record, Hansard, from the 15th of March 1990 onwards, voluminous evidence that I have a rather better record of opposition to Saddam Hussein than you do and than any member of the British or American governments do. Now you say in this document, you quote a source, you have the gall to quote a source without ever having asked me if the allegation from the source was true, that I am, quote, the owner of a company which has made substantial profits from trading in Iraqi oil. Senator, I do not own any companies.